Hi everyone, this is part of my new series that I'm calling the Olympus Fine Print Series, where I go over camera settings that might be a little bit confusing. Today I'll be covering the differences between the noise reduction and the noise filter settings, uh, what they're used for, the settings, and then I'll give you a couple of examples. All right, so I've done a full factory reset on the M5 Mark II. So let's talk about the noise reduction and noise filter settings in the menu. So you have to go down here to the custom menu and we'll go into menu E for exposure, metering, and ISO. And you'll see the second two line items here, noise reduction and noise filter. And if we just take a quick look at the settings, we have off, on, and auto. And then for noise filter, we have off, low, standard, and high. Now the difference between these, these two is they work very differently and they're for different purposes. And let's talk about the noise filter first. The noise filter is designed for your JPEG images. It has no bearing on your RAW images that you take. So if you're taking pictures with RAW plus JPEG, it's only going to affect the JPEG image. And what it's trying to do is reduce the noise and grain, like the color noise and grain in your JPEGs uh, without losing detail as best it can. And the higher the setting, the more noise and grain it's going to try and filter, but then you're gonna lose a little bit more detail. So I typically like to leave this off or on low because even when it's off, the camera applies a little bit of color noise reduction to the images anyway and that's usually good enough and that way you retain the maximum amount of detail however if you need to go a little bit more you know you can set it to low but i found standard and high to be a little bit too aggressive but you'll have to try for yourself and see which uh settings work best for you but let's look at one where i did a noise filter standard on an image all right, so here's an image I took at ISO 25,600, and I was shooting RAW plus JPEG, so it created the RAW image, and then it created the JPEG. But let's just take a quick look at the RAW image. And it's not too bad for 25,000, right? And I took this, I think, with my Pen F. Uh, but let's just punch in and look at the noise and grain that ISO 25,600 gives us. And you can see clearly there's a lot of color noise, and certainly an amount of grain and some loss of detail when you really punch in at like a one-to-one. -one. Now, let's look at the JPEG image that it created. And I had the noise filter set to standard here. And if we punch in, and you can see that it got rid of all the color noise, but it smudged the detail a little bit when it was trying to reduce some of the grain. Because uh, a lot of the grain is still there. And again, remember, this is a 25,600. And if we compare these side by side, the raw image here on the left, um, the standard filter did a pretty good job, I think. And really, unless you're pixel peeping one to one, I think this image looks pretty good uh, for 25,600. But that's all the noise uh, filter does. It's, it's to reduce noise and grain in your JPEGs only. It has no effect on your raw images. Now, one more thing I want to mention about the noise filter before we move on is that it is a software-based filter, meaning it's going to use software in the camera to look for the color noise, luminance noise, chroma noise, etc., and reduce that through software in the camera, and also for the grain as well. And this is primarily for your high ISO images. You don't really see the effect too much on your low ISO. It mainly applies when you get into the higher ISO. So if you're shooting over, say, 3200 or over 6400, I would say that's when you want to start thinking about maybe setting it to low or standard. And then when you're getting up to 25,000, you know, you may even consider shooting uh, with a high noise reduction depending on what your goal is and how much you like to do in post-processing because a lot of these things can be done in post-processing as well now let's talk about the noise reduction filter the noise reduction filter is a very different kind of filter and affects both your raw and your jpeg output in your camera and it's designed primarily for long exposures it has really no effect on high iso noise 
basically what it's trying to do is reduce noise that's in the camera that's created when you do long exposures. And what do I mean by that? When you do long exposures, the sensor has to stay on longer and it generates heat. And the longer the exposure, the more heat that's generated because the sensor stays on for that period of time. So if you're doing two second exposures, two minute exposures, 15 minute exposures, uh, heat tends to build up inside the camera while the sensor is on for that long exposure. So not only does the sensor get hot, but a lot of the internal electronics as well. As well. And all of these things generate noise into the raw image. So what they do is, let's say you set a uh, two minute exposure, right? For long exposure photography. What the camera will do is take that picture for two minutes and then close the shutter and then take another picture with the shutter closed and record all of the noise that it generates while that shutter is on. So all of the heat noise that's generated internally in the camera. And then before it creates the raw image, it subtracts all of the noise that it finds and then creates the final raw image with a lot less noise when you're doing long exposures. So let me show you how it looks or acts mechanically. All right, so I've set the camera into shutter priority and I set it up for a four second uh, long exposure. So when I press the shutter button, the shutter will stay on for four seconds and then it'll close the shutter for four seconds and then it creates the image. And like I said, while that shutter is closed, it's recording the noise that's generated by the heat on the sensor and the electronics inside. So let's look at a real life example. Now this is a picture of my dining room and it's a 15 minute exposure at ISO 200. And I turned the noise reduction feature off. And if you look at the image, it's not that great, you know, in terms of just the color and clarity, even at, uh, you know, zoomed all the way out like this. And then when we punch in, we can see why, because there's a lot of noise here still. Uh, and this is noise that was generated because of the heat in the camera, because the sensor was open for so long or on for so long. So all of the sensor and all the electronics around it, the battery, all of those things get hot during a long exposure, generating this kind of noise. And if we compare this to the high ISO noise, you can see that High ISO noise has a very different kind of pattern to it. And the noise here on the left is not something where I can just turn on the noise reduction feature. I'm sorry, the noise filter to like low standard or high and get rid of. Uh, it made very little difference when I did that in other images. Now, if we compare this image to the next one here on the right, the one on the right, I turned the noise reduction feature on where it took the 15 minute exposure but before creating the raw image, it took another exposure for 15 minutes with the shutter closed. And if we punch in, you will clearly see that it recorded all of the noise generated in the second exposure and subtracted it from the first exposure. So there's a huge improvement here uh, in terms of noise. And again, like I said, this is different kind of noise than high ISO noise. Now it didn't get rid of all of it, but it did get rid of most of it, so it's much easier to deal with in post-processing. So I know those settings can be kind of confusing, especially noise filter versus noise reduction. They really should have called it something like noise filter versus black frame. That would have made a little more sense, I think. But either way, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider subscribing to the channel. But either way, hopefully we'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.